Before we get started, there's a special announcement at the end of this video for how you can get early access to more episodes of The Conspiracy Theory of Everything for free on a platform guaranteed not to censor it. Please stick around till the end and enjoy our first chapter in this brand new series. Welcome to what may very well be one of the most important videos we've ever made. Now, in order to even begin this video, I must first establish this disclaimer. This video is a set of hypotheses, an exploration of the world, and while many ideas will be explored, what we are sharing here is not meant to be taken as definitive truth. We're not claiming this is entirely made up of facts. Rather, we are attempting to explore a deeper, perhaps darker, area of human consciousness and see the bigger picture of what is really going on. Please have your own experience, do your own research, and don't be afraid to go deeper down the rabbit hole. For the truth is often stranger than fiction. There's no denying that the collective human consciousness is in quite of a pickle today. It is chaotic and overtaking itself and all of nature. Because of the internet, we have nearly real-time access to information. And yet, most people are only seeing a particular slice of the story. For example, the algorithms behind what you find when you use Google, Facebook, YouTube, and almost every other social network are designed to show you what you're already looking for, or what the computer code thinks you want to see based on other people's behavior. Unless you're actively searching for new information, to find something different, or follow someone who is creating content that is going down rabbit holes and sharing what they find, what you get is generally what you're already accustomed to seeing. You only see what you want to see. Further, due to the controversial nature of many ideas, especially those labeled as conspiracy theories, many ideas are not explored by the masses because when they hear about it, they see that these ideas are ridiculed and they write them off as nonsense or dangerous extremism. Following the herd mentality makes it easier to dismiss exploring new ideas so people can easily go along with their lives. This is critical because the ability to change one's belief changes your experience of life. And most people are happy just letting things be as they are. A minority of people are compelled to seek higher truth at all cost. And certainly most of us know that sometimes it can be very hard to empathize with those who choose comfort over following their passions. As the saying goes, you can take a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. And trying to convince others to think differently only leads to distress on everyone's part. As many ancient texts will suggest, this is not how true wisdom is passed on. This creates a sort of self-created deception and distraction from the bigger picture, which is rarely explored. If you're already familiar with spirit science, we've talked before about how everything is connected. This was even a fundamental part of my own awakening, where I had a transcendent experience that all things were one, unified and stemming from and linking to a singular greater whole. Yet today, and the struggle of human consciousness, is that most people are not seeing it, simply not looking or not even wanting to look. In modern science today, there are many scientists searching for an all-pervading theory of everything, something that unifies quantum mechanics and the theories of relativity. And so today, we respectfully present to you the conspiracy theory of everything. I invite you to watch this with the intention of self-reflection, for as is the nature of consciousness itself, pointing the finger and blaming others only creates more of the same cycle that we've been trapped in. Liberating ourselves from the illusion is the only way to really break free of the shackles that bind us to our lower state of being.
Our conspiracy theory of everything begins first with the Demiurge. The Demiurge is an ancient Greek and Gnostic concept describing a consciousness that is considered to essentially be the creator of the physical universe, but not the supreme creative force behind all things. A good way to explore this idea is through The Matrix, a science fiction story that suggests everything we think we know of as the real world is nothing but an illusion, a false world within which most are imprisoned, unable to effectively identify what is real. As people go about their day-to-day -day lives, they think that their world is authentic, but that every individual is truly plugged into an artificial reality severed from the real world. While people suffer, there is a tremendous benefit to the ruling overlords, who in the film were a form of AI. As it relates to us, this AI is in essence the Demiurge. The Demiurge was described as a force, a deity, or a consciousness who was responsible for the creation of the physical world and reality. However, in a way, it had imposed itself over top of the true reality, the supreme oneness that created all things. In this, it was a false god who had assumed authority over the world, masking the living beings, namely us, from the supreme truth, the highest order of creation, and making us believe that what we experienced as real, the physical reality that we are a part of, was the true, authentic reality, even though it wasn't. Depending on the school and belief of different Gnostic sects, the Demiurge was either seen as something malevolent, deliberately trying to deceive us, or something that was simply ignorant or misguided of its place in the universe and the rest of creation, which led to us becoming lost in the illusion as a result. Said in simple terms, the Demiurge was the force behind the physical universe, but within our consciousness, so long as we perceived that which is physical to be real, we were slaves to the illusion of the false or at least incomplete reality. To that end, these ancient people, at least those who were part of the ancient mystery schools, believed that the physical reality was an illusion. They sought to liberate themselves from the illusion of reality through varying spiritual practices, from meditation to plant medicine ceremonies and everything in between, in order to connect with higher realms of existence and break free of the false world by finding the truth, the supreme oneness within. This is because even the Demiurge and the physical universe still stemmed from the supreme oneness and the light of truth could be found within. Known to the Gnostics as Sophia, meaning wisdom in Greek, it was the act of awakening this divine spark within us that would return us to the higher realms, which became the ultimate goal of many Gnostic schools. This is where we find the roots of enlightenment and light concepts from around the world which teach that within this world of suffering, we can release ourselves from the illusion through various forms of mastery and self-discipline, both physical, emotional, and mental. This, of course, takes considerable effort and intention to do so. In essence, transcendent people do what is hard, and that's why their lives are easy. People in suffering do what is easy, and that's why their lives are hard. Fast forward to today, there is a tremendous volume of voices from across the internet, exploring ideas, concepts, and sharing a metric buttload of memes. But amidst the voices of the masses, we find a new concept emerging and being discussed in scientific and even some mainstream circles. An idea that proposes that the entire universe as we know of is actually a hologram or a simulation of some kind. Scientifically speaking, if we look at the cosmos from the perspective of quantum mechanics, there is a general acknowledgement that we really don't understand the universe like we thought we did. We are seeing the building blocks of the universe, the subatomic particles, the waves, behaving in ways that do not make sense in the context of classical mechanics, which reveal discrepancies in the laws of physics. Yet, the laws of physics still stand and apply in a practical sense when talking about our macroscopic world. But the fabric of the reality that we live in operates by rules that we have yet to uncover. 
The holographic universe seems in principle to be very much like how you might expect a movie and a projector to work in tandem. When you watch a movie, you enjoy it linearly, going through it one frame at a time, usually at 24, 30, or 60 frames per second. The stories on the screen follow a narrative of some kind, and generally speaking, there are definite laws that make up the universe you are experiencing in the film. Yet, the quantum world, on the other hand, is like being able to observe the entire roll of film timelessly at any point, which includes zooming in on individual frames, playing things backwards, forwards, the sequels and prequels all at the same time. The particles and waves that make up our reality are non-linear and could potentially imply notions of retrocausality. And while they too follow their own set of laws, they are different from the world we exist in at a macro level. Another example of this is found in computer code. What you are seeing on your computer or phone screen at any given time is a filtered projection of what is really going on underneath the surface, designed to be easy for you to interpret. Yet, under the surface of these machines, there is a computer language that is incomprehensible to nearly everyone. Languages like binary and machine code are too simple to make complex algorithms effectively in. Instead, programmers use higher level languages designed to be understood by humans to write code that is then translated into the lower, base level machine code and then binary at the bottom. What you are seeing when you look at your phone or computer monitor ultimately comprises mountains of ones and zeros that lay under the surface of the digital world, just like what is under the surface of our own reality. You might be familiar with the ancient wisdom teaching, as above, so below, a concept that applies on several levels, describing that which exists in higher realities is a mirror of lower ones. So as with machine code and binary, ultimately all of that computational code is equal to and actively creates the digital experience on your devices, but they are two entirely different paradigms. This is the great challenge of modern science today, unifying quantum mechanics and general relativity, because we are unable to comprehend yet how the physical world and tangible substance, continuity, gravity, life, time, and consciousness emerge from this flux field of quantum information, which appears to operate by an entirely different set of laws related to statistics and probability. Yet, like with machine code and computers, are they really so different? The question then becomes, as many are theorizing today, could our entire reality be nothing more than a simulation? An artificial reality that our consciousness is plugged into? There are some oddities that have been captured on camera that some people believe are glitches in the matrix. Now, maybe these oddities are fake, who knows? But as an example, we do have this curious clip of a bird who is perched in midair without moving before flying away. There was also this news footage from Russia several years ago that someone caught an individual levitating on camera. But when the guy with the camera called out to them, the girl dropped down and ran away. Now, again, I'm not trying to say this is hard evidence of a real life matrix, but it certainly compels curiosity and this is what it's really all about. Humanity living in the question, in the mystery of life. And these strange occurrences that beg us to ask the question, what is the true nature of reality? Now, on that note, I encourage you to please do your own research and go down these rabbit holes yourself and make up your own mind. In this way, you become a conduit of free thought rather than following in the herd mentality of that which has been established for you by the powers that be and society at large. Even if the laws of physics as we know them today say that this is impossible, the levitation or birds perched in midair, we also know that the laws of physics are incomplete. We don't even know how to properly fit gravity into our standard model of physics and perhaps unlocking these secrets will change everything for us. 
And this brings us to our primary key, where we begin with our conspiracy theory of everything, the basis from which everything to come will build off of. The Demiurge is, in essence, a lesson about the illusion of reality. That the entire world as we conceive it to be is based on what we perceive with our physical senses, which is a limited experience of the totality of that which exists in the whole universe. This idea suggests that the illusion of the cosmos is incomplete, and as long as we believe in only it by itself, we too shall remain incomplete. We are living within a material universe, yes, but there is more to the cosmos than just that. And as long as we choose to believe in this limited reality, we will continue to perpetuate its existence. It is only by embracing that which we don't know and asking the right questions can we break free of the fetters that bind us. In the Emerald Tablets of Thoth the Atlantean, there is a great deal of discussion that describes the human soul as a light trapped in the veil of the night, a metaphor suggesting that the night is the illusion of separateness, the soul disconnected from the Supreme Oneness, or simply trapped in illusions in general, basically anything that is not the highest truth. It is the unilluminated mind that actively creates the reality that it perceives to be real. And as such, humanity lives out its days in the dark, veiled in the illusion of one's own beliefs, disconnected from any higher reality. This was portrayed excellently in Marvel's Doctor Strange, when Steven denies anything beyond the material universe, and then is shown a glimpse of the multidimensional nature of reality, that thoughts are things. He is shown that all of us steer the reality field by our conscious intent. But yet, as we become complacent in the creation of our lives, we give up control of the driver's seat. But then the question is, who is driving the ship? Literally anyone and everything else. Carl Jung called it the collective unconscious, the collective mind field of everyone whose thoughts and feelings influence our own very decisions and actions by the concentration of their energetic weight. Whether it be the media, the news, advertisements, what your family or friends tell you, or things that you just happen across on the internet. Ultimately, all of it is processed by our egos, which shape who we think we are as we disconnect further from the nature of our being. So the question then becomes, what is the truth? What is the higher reality? And how do we connect with it? The ancient wisdom teachings describe that the quest for wisdom or enlightenment or the true nature of being is a continuous journey into the unknown and the illumination that we are active creators of our lives, not simply beholden unto the preconceived patterns that we've been following in. The great truth we must understand about the Demiurge is that we are the ones who actively perpetuate its existence by believing in the physical universe as the ultimate reality. Your beliefs shape the reality that you experience, as Dr. Bruce Lipton has demonstrated through his work with the biology of belief. The beliefs and ideas that we hold in our minds can be scientifically proven to affect how our DNA and cells express themselves. If you believe you are a low life with nothing going on and will die alone and miserable, guess what kind of life you will lead? If you believe you can change the world, guess what kind of life you will lead? In order to break free of the limitations that we feel are imposed upon us, we must first believe that it's possible to do so. We must open ourselves to a greater truth, a greater reality, one that is beyond the Demiurge, and perceive a cosmic truth that forever changes life as we know it. Yet, humanity is not paying attention to messages like this in mass, and there is a reason for it. It is a very significant and critical thing, for this one piece of the puzzle must be resolved in order for humanity to truly advance as a species and break free of illusion collectively. Our journey down the rabbit hole is only just beginning. Thank you so much for watching. Now, The Conspiracy Theory of Everything is a massive series and there's a great deal of content coming. 
However, if you want to get early free access to our new series before it launches on YouTube, along with a bonus collection of other interesting conspiracy content, please use the link below to get access to our private platform and together we'll see how deep the rabbit hole really goes.